All right, we might get started because we're two minutes into the meeting and I don't um, want to keep people any longer than possible. We do, um, we had 16 registrations for the meeting. So um, as per usual, we usually get about 50% attendance from who, um, oh, Tony's here, lovely, um, from those who register. So hopefully we'll get a few more um, coming along as we get started. Um, so my name's Deanne. I am CEO and project officer here at Queensland Association of School Tuck Shops, and I'm a dietitian by background. Um, so I just wanted to, I guess, introduce myself. Uh, I'll be running this meeting using a PowerPoint presentation. And so I'll start that going and I'll share my screen. Um, and when I'm sharing my screen, we can't when I've got it on presentation mode, I won't be able to see anyone else. So um, if you did want to say anything, please uh, shout out um, rather than um, then uh, putting your hand up on, on the Zoom um, functionality, if that makes sense. So I'm going to start the presentation now. And oh, hang on, I can share screen here. Mm, don't know what that means. Okay, I need to share my screen first. You know what that means? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can someone um, just speak up and let me know whether you can see the PowerPoint just verbally, if you don't mind? Yes, we can. Yes, thanks, Tony. All right. I put oh, no, we can see you in presentation mode. Okay, so welcome to uh, the first Tuck Shop Network meeting of 2024. Um, for those who may have attended meetings last year, you would have um, had Donna hosting the meetings. Um, she no longer works with us, unfortunately. She was on 12 months. Um, so you're back to me for those who um, attended in 2022 and before. Um, so the, the special topic today is tuck shops as a commercial kitchen. Um, as I've been traveling around, we've had lots of demand for tuck shop tune-ups in the last 12 months or so. And one of the things that is very apparent in many of the tuck shops that I walk into is the presence of a lot of domestic style equipment and also tuck shop setups, which are not conducive to an efficient and productive um, food service operation. So I thought it was time to really address uh, that issue for, for tuck shops across Queensland. And um, as you know, we have a special guest joining us, which is uh, Food Strategy. And that is a company that helps tuck, tuck shops do the planning, the designing and the upgrading of, of their space to make it much more um, friendly to cooking on site, um, making healthier options more available for, for Queensland school children. So just before we really get into it, I wanted to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on and custodians of land across Australia and the connections to land, sea and community. We pay our respect to elders past, present and emerging and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples today. We recognise that Aboriginal peoples and Torres Strait Islander peoples each have their own unique languages, beliefs, cultural practices, traditions and diversity within each culture. So as I said, um, I'm the CEO here at um, Quast, and we have such a very small staff that I'm also the project officer, senior project officer, junior project officer, and deliver um, a lot of our member services as well. Um, I have a background as a trained dietitian and um, I've been working as a public health nutritionist probably for the last 20 years um, of, of my work experience and my contact details are there on the screen uh, and I also add those to any emails that I send out as well. So feel free to be in touch anytime, um, any questions post this meeting and anything to do with tuck shops, feel free to reach out at any time. So I wanted to just go around the virtual room, um, if you don't mind um, everyone online sharing uh, your name, your school and um, what you are hoping to get out of today's meeting and that will really help with our guest um, as well. So on my screen, um, you don't have to put your um, 
your video on if you don't want to, but certainly we would like to hear your voice. So uh, I'm just going to go in order of who's on my screen. So Maren Snelling is first. So if you don't mind sharing who you are, where you're from. Did you say Maren? Yes. See me? I'll just say. Yeah. Yes, we can see you. Um, Marin from Hatvale Primary School. Um, uh, what do you want to know? How many kids? Uh, just just your name, the name of your school, and what you're hoping to get out of today. So you're from Hatton Vale, is that correct? Yep, Hatton Vale in the Lockyer Valley. Yep. Um, I didn't catch what the um what the Zoom call was about because I'm still working, so I'm just listening in the background. <laughs> okay. I like every meeting so I can, you know, get any tips and stuff. So I'm sure it will be useful. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Marin. Thanks very much. Okay, next person is Kathy O'Keefe. Is that how you say your name? How you say your name? Bay. Bay. Yes, Bay O'Keefe. Bay O'Keefe. Hello, Bay. Are you there? You're still on mute if you've been trying to speak. We'll move on to Kim from Banksia Beach. Kim, if you want to just um, tell us what uh, you'd like to get out of the meeting today. Hi. Um, we actually met with Through Strategy last year to sort of go over a bit of a refab of our tuck shop. And I thought it might just be useful, useful to refresh um, in my own mind, what is possible, what's out there, what products are available, etc. Just to, um, we didn't get the grant we're after, as most of the schools probably don't. So <laughs> I was sort of starting, starting again in my own mind. So I'm ready for any opportunity that comes forward. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you, Raylene from Dolby. Dolby. Hi. Um, from Dolby South. Uh, we're actually looking at upgrading um, our, our hot plate. We don't have a hot plate currently, so I just thought we might jump on and just have a look to see what we can possibly look at. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, who have we got now? We've got iPhone GM. I'm not sure who that is. No response from there? Okay, we might go to... Yep. Oh, sorry. My name's um, Gemma. I'm calling in from Musgrave Hill on the Gold Coast. I'm just new to Tuck Shop, so here to learn anything possible. Okay, excellent. Welcome. Thank you. Whereabouts at the Gold Coast is Musgrave Hill? Uh, Central Gold Coast near Southport. Okay, lovely. Thank you very much. It, Gemma, um, Rhonda. Oh, sorry. No, Jamie Lee. Sorry. Hello. Hi. Um, I'm from Roma State College and oh, yep. I just we would love to do an upgrade, so I just want to see what's available to us. Okay. Excellent. That's Thank you. Thank you. And what else have we got? Who haven't we heard from? Uh Rhonda. Rhonda. Welcome, Rhonda. So you you just got here. We're just asking for people to say their name, their school, and what they would what they're hoping to get out of the meeting today. I can see that you're not on mute, Rhonda, but we can't hear anything. I'm not sure what's happening there. But okay, we'll we'll move on um, just so we can get through all the content. So at every Tuck Shop Network meeting, um, we always do a bit of a, an update about what's happening with our organisation. And hopefully you will have seen, um, heard from us already this year with our Term 1 Talking Tuck Shop digital magazine that was sent out uh, two weeks ago now and it was sent to all of the contacts that we have in our database. So if you didn't get that, let me know and I'll make sure that you're added to our database bumper issue this year I think it's 24 pages with lots of really excellent information um, and thanks very much to our co communications manager Chrissy who put that together she does an amazing job 
Um, we also have a new trainer um, for our food safety supervisor course. So to deliver that course, you need to have a cert for in training and assessment. Um, our previous trainer was Chris Ogden, who retired at the end of last year. So we're very pleased to have Karen on board. So anyone doing food safety supervisor training with us from this point forward will um, meet with the lovely Karen. Um, and then we also uh, had an announcement that we've got another 12 months of funding from Health and Wellbeing Queensland to deliver the Healthier Tuck Shop Support pro Program, which this Tuck Shop Network meeting, all of our network meetings are funded through that program. So we're very pleased um, to get that that funding um, for another year from Health and Wellbeing Queensland. The healthy menu planning training, um, that's almost complete. Um, the, the course that we have developed is almost complete. We're doing our final face-to-face -face delivery of that training and to get some any more feedback from participants. Um, we are actually full um, now with that training that I'll be delivering next week. It'll be three hours face-to-face um, -face, and then I'll be getting some feedback from all of the participants and then we'll finalise that course. That was, again, funded by Health and Wellbeing Queensland to develop that course. So we'll be talking to them about how we deliver it going forward um, at an affordable and equitable um way for all tuck shops across Queensland. Um, and then finally, we're very excited to have a meeting coming up with the Minister for Education um, on the 15th of March. And at that meeting, we will be advocating for school tuck shops in general. We've got quite a few um, issues on the list that we want to talk about with the, the minister. Um, but if anyone on the meeting today has anything in particular that, would, that we, they would like us to bring to the minister's attention, feel free to be in touch. One of the things I definitely will be talking about is the facilities and equipment um, that are currently in place in tuck shops in Queensland and the fact that um, really a lot of them need a huge amount of work to, to be able to become um, efficient food service operations. So that's definitely high on the list for that meeting. So we've got some upcoming training um, and this is all the training we have available for term one um, and leading into the holidays. So we've got four more courses uh, for the food safety supervisor. So we've got um, an online course on mon this coming Monday. And then um, the 12th of March face-to-face -face course is full. And then we're still taking registrations for the 19th of March and the 12th of April. So the 12th of April, that's actually in the holidays. It's a, a pupil free day. And that one's an online one. And similarly, um, our convener course, I'll be delivering that on um, the pupil free day of Thursday, 11th of April face-to-face -face, and the Pathway to Profit course on the 12th of April face-to-face. -face. So if you're keen on either of those courses, um, just jump on our website and send through a registration for those. Only available to members. Um, and so if, if training is what you're looking for and you're not a member, then feel free to um, join up and then you can come along to the training. All right, so today the topic of the meeting is tuck shop, the tuck shop as a commercial kitchen. And as I said, um, been around to lots of different tuck shops in the last few years doing tuck shop tune-ups and other any opportunity that I get to to visit a, a tuck shop I do um, and you know it's definitely struck me there's a lot of challenges um, in working in a in a tuck shop context um, for many different reasons but certainly the facilities and the equipment that um, conveners are working with and trying to, you know, deliver a, a fast and effective and healthy food service, they, they really are up against it in a lot of um, situations. So that's something that, you know, I'll probably be really banging on about um, in 2024 uh, because if, you know, our mission as an organisation is for tuck shops to be serving healthy food um, and having you know healthy tuck shops, healthy schools, and healthy children, and we really can do without barriers around the equipment that 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 we're trying to do to to produce those healthy menus. So why do we think tuck shops should be seen as a commercial kitchen? Again, cost has been emphasising for many years the cooking of healthy meals in house, and you can't do that efficiently if you don't have the right equipment available. So um, that's one of the major reasons. Serving hundreds of meals each week in very short time frames um, to be able to be effect efficient and effective, you need to be a, need to have the right equipment and workflow going on. Food safety best practice, and you know that is often the the issue that gets a lot of. Um, 
schools and the government over the line in terms of funding to improve the facilities is making sure that the prep areas, the cleaning area, or, you know, the cleaning um, potential and storage areas are all up to scratch when it comes like looking at it from a food safety um, best practice perspective. We know in a state school, you're not bound by the Food Act in Queensland, which means that you don't have inspections of your premises and you, you know, you don't need to have um, a qualified food safety supervisor, for example, on site. But we know that it is best practice to make sure that the facilities and um, premises are up to scratch to give you the best chance of, of serving safe food to students. You know, students are a vulnerable population. They're young people, particularly, you know, preppies and grade ones, their immune systems may not be fully developed yet. So, you know, we view them as a very vulnerable population and it's really important to make sure that their food is um, free from contaminants and as, as safe as possible. Tuck shops also operate in very tight budgets and therefore they really need to be efficient um, in terms of what you're doing um, across the whole tuck shop process. And, um, you know, you need to need to make sure that you have the equipment available to you to make that efficiency as, as um, good as possible. You also want to retain your skilled staff. Um, there's a lot of places that you can work as a, you know, a qualified um, kitchen hand, kitchen assistant, chef, um, or someone who just has really good food skills. And we want those people to stay in school tuck shops as much as possible. So, you know, if you get someone who's highly skilled and highly experienced in a tuck shop environment where they're having to use domestic ovens and don't have a dishwasher or only have a domestic dishwasher available, uh, they're going to use their feet, uh, vote with their feet and leave and find somewhere that's, that is is better for, for, you know, better match for their skills. So retention of that highly skilled and motivated staff is really important. And then confidence in purchasing by parents and the school community and also, you know, and staff in the school. I've had plenty of school staff say to me, there's no way I would buy anything from that tuck shop. Have you seen the state of it? And it may not be actually the cleanliness that they're talking about. It's just looking around and, and you know, they see a domestic kitchen and not a food service operation and don't feel confidence in, in um, purchasing their lunch from there. And similarly for parents, if, you know, if they get a look at some of these tuck shops and think, oh, I don't want my child to be eating out of that tuck shop. It just doesn't look like a proper food service outlet. So, you know, all of these things are reasons why uh, tuck shops should be viewed as a commercial kitchen. The Department of Education agrees with this. So um, on, on the cost website, uh, we have all of these documents downloadable, which are the design principles and technical standards from the Department of Education. So you can see the link there on your screen. Um, but if you go onto our website, that's in the um, in the resources section. And so I've just circled with red a few of the um, items that are that are highlighted in these design principles. So you can see efficient layout to support sequential preparation and assembly of food items. And a lot of the places, tuck shops I've been in, um, people are run from here to there, back to here to there to do all the prep. And it really um, slows down how quickly they can get their work done space for tuck shop staff to work and circulate, a large workbench that can be accessed from both sides. Um, you know, if you're thinking about your own tuck shop while I'm going through these and thinking my tuck shop doesn't look like that, these are actually, you know, design standards from the department. So you've got um, you've got these documents available to you to use for advocacy within your own um, tuck shops. Commercial dishwasher is actually listed within the Department of Education standards. So, you know, that is definitely something that if you're if you don't have one available, then you can take this to your principal and to your PNC executive to say, actually, this is this is a Department of Education um, uh, standard. Two bowl stainless steel sink, and I'm not talking the domestic ones here, and then fitted joinery commercial grade bench tops that um, don't harbour germs and pests, for example. So there's some. So that's just in the food prep area. There's also um, for the servery area. So sufficient work and circulation space to permit movement between the counter, the prep area, food storage areas, making sure that display cabin cabinets for um, prepared food are hot. Um, and available at room temperature and cool appropriately for the types of foods that are being um, that are being held in them. So, you know, there's lots of um, resources that you have at your disposal already that can justify uh, a request for an upgrade or a refurbishment of your tuck shop space. 
So I just thought I'd go through through some examples. And these are all photos that I've taken in tuck shops um, as I've moved around um, around the state. And so you can see on the left there, very common to see in tuck shops, um, the commercial, commercial dishwash, um, sorry, domestic dishwashers. And when you see these in tuck shops, they're not being used. They're being ignored. So they're basically just a place for dirt and pests to, to gather. So, um, you know, you may as well get rid of them. Um, with the cycles that they have, uh, they don't get hot enough to make the, the, um, the items that you're cleaning clean enough for a food service operation and they take far too long in you know in the three or four hours that you're doing your prep and clean up time in the tuck shop environment um, they're they're pretty much useless so what we want to see is in the space where you would have a domestic uh, dishwasher that you change over to a commercial dishwasher they you know they they can be very compact and fit into the same space that's already there um, in most tuck shops for, for a um, domestic dishwasher obviously a lot more expensive, um, but definitely, you know, when I talk to tuck shop conveners that have moved from a domestic or no dishwasher to a commercial dishwasher, they tell me, I didn't think I needed it, but now it's my favourite piece of equipment in the tuck shop. So sinks. I see a lot of sinks that look like this or even single sinks in tuck shops, which is, you know, just you cannot wash dishes safely if you've only got one sink or how do you wash huge pots and pans in this kind of setup so obviously you need to be moving towards the very deep um, commercial grade uh, double sink situations even if you have a commercial dishwasher you still need this setup um, in in tuck shops ovens so many particularly primary schools have domestic ovens and they might have the wide ones but um, you know you can see this one here this tuck shop the convener mentioned to me that they had to stop, they had to remove pizzas from their menu because they could, the, the oven couldn't cope with the demand when they had pizza on the menu, which is, you know, really disappointing for them and also disappointing for the students because they just don't have the equipment that allows them to have um, a menu that's really popular with the students. So, you know, we want to move towards having um, commercial ovens, you don't need combis. I mean, lucky if you do, but, um, you know, you need to have at least five and up to 10 tray capacity in tuck shops if you really want to get through all of the orders. Freezers. Again, in Oz, I did a tuck shop tune up the other day in a secondary school, had around 2,000 students. Um, this photo is not from that tuck shop, but they had seven freezers in three different rooms because they didn't have any commercial freezers. It was all domestic um, chest style freezers and a couple of domestic uprights, but you know, minimal capacity, wasting all that space above the freezer if it's a chest freezer and then obviously getting things out and the, the depth of them and that sort of thing, making it really difficult having to have signs everywhere. This is where this is stored. This is where that's stored. Wouldn't it be better if they had, this is, I think this is a bit of an outlandish example with so many freezers in one tuck shop, a whole room dedicated to freezers, but <clears throat> certainly all tuck shops um, should have access to uh, an upright commercial style freezer in, in our opinion. Similarly, hot holding. So this is the same tuck shop that had all of those freezers. That I don't think they're all in this photo, but they had seven hot boxes um, to hold all of their hot food before service. And as you can see here, um, the hot boxes were basically taking up all the servery space. So they had one window here for serving and another window to the left um, of, of that hot box there, trying to serve, you know, not the 2,000 students. They're not all buying from the tuck shop on the same day, but you can imagine the queuing that goes on in that tuck shop just trying to get through those orders because all of their servery space is taken up with the hot holding. When really in a secondary school, you'd be wanting to look at a self-service Bain-Marie style um, type of servery to get through the queues and encourage kids to use the tuck shop because who wants to queue for 20 minutes to get their lunch? Um, you know, kids would prefer to bring their own or not eat at all rather than doing that. So on the COS web website, we've got um, a few resources in addition to those design principles from the Department of Ed. Um, we've got a tuck shop equipment checklist. So, you know, that might be that your first place to go is to go to that checklist and have a look at what we suggest as these are options for um, equipment and have a look at what you've got and what you might 
what you could use. And then we also have the points to consider when refurbishing a school tuck shop. And that's that's um, a smart choices research resource. It's pretty old now, but it's still, I've reviewed it and still very relevant um, today. It, it touches on the design principles and, you know, the, the purpose of this is really to move towards cooking more options within the school tuck shop. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to hand over to Mattia, um, who is food strategy, and I'll let him introduce himself. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to move over to his presentation. So just bear with me. Full screen mode. View. Okay, over Great. to you. Thank you. I had a lot more hair in that photo, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and we stole that off yeah. LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone the other way. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Matia from Food Strategy. Thank you um, for letting me, you know, talk to you guys today. Um, first off, I want to say I've been to a, a lot of tuck shops in the past few years, and I'm always in awe and extremely impressed by the work that you guys do with the appliances that you have and the facilities that you have. Um, because they're always heavily under under equipped, um, but you manage to feed you know three, four, or five hundred students in a short amount of time. And if you were to put any chef in that situation, um, they would probably have a a, a nervous breakdown. So uh, hats off to you. Um, so uh, I'm from Food Strategy. Um, we've been around for twenty seven years this year, um, and we specialize in food service designs. So canteens, uh, tuck shops, and in the education sector have been a really big part of what we do in the past four to five years. We've really seen um, a lot of acknowledgement in that space of schools upgrading um, because a lot of school canteens are the original Besser Block building that was put in place when the school was built. Uh, I'm recently working on the school that I went to when I was in primary school, and it is the exact same canteen. Um, and school numbers have increased in that time. So you're you're working within spaces that were inefficiently designed to start off with, um, but then your school has grown and it's hard to keep up with the capacity and the numbers. Um, so what we do at Food Strategy is we come out and uh, assess the needs of each canteen individually because you all have different needs, you all have different nuances and you all operate slightly differently. So it's, it's great for us to come out and understand how each one of your canteens operate um, and then work out the best and most efficient plan to put together for you to get upgrading uh, or to get funding to go through to upgrades. Um, and that efficiency is through layout, benches, equipment. Um, there's a range of different things. And then, as mentioned, you'll have slightly different pieces of equipment that suit your specific needs for each school. Some schools do a lot of pizzas, some schools do a lot of hot dogs, some schools do a lot of sushi. Every school operates slightly different. Um, so it's really good for us to understand. Um, I've actually got three examples that we went through uh, or we've had in the past three weeks, which are our most common examples. Do I just, oh, there we go. Um, scenarios of schools. Um, so first one being us coming out to uh, meet on site, assess your canteen, and you've actually got a really good size space canteen, it's just inefficiently laid out. You know, domestic ovens, no dishwasher or a domestic dishwasher, tiny sink, a load of domestic freezers um, and fridges uh, and just minimal storage capacity. Um, and you're, you're operating in that space and it, it gets difficult when you're making a lot of sandwiches, when you're baking cupcakes, when you're making wet dishes, um, when you're trying to pack lunches for, for kids. So the, there's, there is some canteens out there that are definitely, you have a great space for us to work in and we can pick that, pick that project up um, and design what you've got there. It doesn't, it doesn't require any additional building works outside of that. So in that scenario, we would come out, see you assess the needs that you would um, like for your canteen in our experience as well. We put our, our hats on and, you know, um, use our experience to go, these are, great key factors for you moving forward in your flows and layouts. Um, and then we'll provide you a floor plan that'll give you a quote and uh, an equipment budget so that you can then go and seek funding um, or a grant to upgrade your tuck shop. Um, now, the next scenario, uh, I've actually had all three of these scenarios 
that I'll be looking at right now uh, in the past two weeks. Um, the next one is going to a canteen, finding out that you have you do have a good facility, but it's probably just a bit too small. So we need to look at an extension of your canteen um, and extending the canteen out a little bit to give you more usable space so that you can pick up a bit more serving room, uh, a bit more, just a little bit more of an efficient layout. So where that scenario is quite common um, is where the old tuck shops have been designed for students to queue up and grab their lunch uh, from the counter every day, not to pick up your baskets and take your food back to the room. Um, so that's a quite a common scenario where we look at extending the facility out. When we do extensions, um, we work with other parties that we'll recommend to you to help the best path of getting and securing funding for you guys to extend those facilities. Now, the third scenario is, uh, which I had on Friday last week, we went to assess the canteen. They wanted to apply for the grant and applying for the grant and upgrading their equipment would not benefit them because the physical building itself was not fit for purpose. Um, it wasn't compliant by any means to health and safety standards. Um, it was a very inefficient workflow of space. It did not have compliant walkways. Um, so the best scenario for that school was to uh, knock down and rebuild. Um, it's a rare scenario, but it's definitely a scenario that is out there. And uh, we always want to point you in the right direction. So if we go out and assess the situation and, and believe that your school you know, you're not going to benefit from getting a grant to upgrade a few elements on the inside. You are better off than looking at a new facility. It is a longer process, but it achieves the goal for the school in the long run. And when we're assessing schools, we're always looking at where the school currently is, but where the school wants to be uh, as a canteen, how, how many students they would like to feed the growth of the school, because you don't get these uh, grants or, or abilities to upgrade your touch shop every two or three years. It, it is every 20 or 30 years um, at present. So it's really making sure that we're getting the best for each school out of what they need and what they want. Um, so we really look at the efficiencies of the canteen um, and the efficiencies of your equipment and your layout to make life easier for you. And as Deanne touched on, having uh, better equipment, it gives you more efficient workspace, more storage capabilities, uh, and helps you to retain staff that have a skill set that are happy to work in that environment. And the dishwasher is a great example. A lot of schools don't have or just have a domestic dishwasher. And almost every school that I talk to go, no, no, we never use it. We don't need it. It takes an hour and a half to do a load of dishes. Um, it's not worth it. And then I always see them trying to wash all their dishes at the end of the day in a tiny little domestic sink. And it adds 45 minutes to the end of their day. Jumping to a commercial dishwasher, you're washing a load of dishes in a minute and a half. So there's a massive difference between them. And commercial dishwashers are designed to sanitize your equipment to a high standard. They reach a higher temperature. So that's a really good example of, of upgrading a piece of equipment to make your space more efficient. Um, under counter storage fridges, larger benches, deeper sinks, larger commercial storage fridges and freezers. Uh, are all just great pieces of equipment to help you guys become more efficient and have better use of your workspace and the ability for you to produce better food, healthier food, because it's easier when you're working in an efficient space to do those things. Um, that's that's my spiel. Does, would anybody have any questions for me? I've got some. Yes, please go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so do you provide services all over Queensland? Yes, yes. Yeah. So we we travel all, all throughout Australia, um, but yes, all over Queensland. So we would uh, take your inquiry um, and assess what it is you're looking at and then come out and visit the school um, to do the assessment on site with you. It's always better for us to meet in, pay, in, in face and, and have a conversation person to person so we can understand how your canteen operates because when you see it, it makes a lot more sense and it helps us sort of piece that puzzle together so that you are getting the best results at the end because all of our goals are for everybody to get the best results. So whether you are in regional Queensland um, or Brisbane Brisbane CBD, um, Gold Coast, we'll travel anywhere. 
And who do you work mostly with in the school? Is it the principal? Is it the PNC executive, the tuck shop convener? It's, it's actually all different levels. So we often meet with conveners um, who are the ones that are, are initially making the push to get a canteen upgrade. Um, we can be contacted by the head of the PNC and they'll organise us to come out and have the upgrade. Um, and then in some instances, schools will meet with the principal and the principal will engage us to come out and initiate the um, the, the floor plan, I should say. Um, so we work with all different levels. So it doesn't matter where you're situated in, in, the, in the tree. Um, please feel free to reach out and make contact with us because everything has to start somewhere. And starting initially for us to come out and have the conversation is the start of the process for you to put your case forward if you're looking at a, at a, a canteen upgrade. Okay, thank you. Um, do you recommend particular brands of um, equipment or just the type of equipment that's needed? So we'll recommend particular brands because there is a there is a flooded market of brands out there and not all brands are equal. Um, there's brands out there that are uh, skinned as a commercial piece of equipment but are built as a domestic piece of equipment. So there are brands out there that that aren't always the best choice, even though they look like they're a good choice because of the price on them. Um, we pick brands that are cost effective and entry level into the commercial market, but are from suppliers that are reputable so that when you do have an issue with a piece of equipment, any piece of equipment will have an issue at some stage in its lifetime. Um, parts are available. Service technicians are available. The units are easy to get fixed to, to get looked at as opposed to brands that are not reputable and not um, so popular in the market that if something happens and a compressor goes on your fridge motor, you're not having to wait two or three weeks for that part to come to get shipped from overseas and then the expense and the cost of everything to make that happen. If you're sticking with a reputable, a reputable brand, a good example is um, to, to give you a name is Scope. Um, a lot of schools will have a scope branded fridge in there. Um, they are the fridge manufacturer for a lot of uh, Coca-Cola fridges. So they're reliable and their parts are readily available. So they're a really good option to lean to towards schools because they have entry level units that will fit the school's needs without going blowing costs out too far. Okay. You you talked about um compliance like for build like where you recommend a knockdown rebuild. Yes. Compliance with health and safety standards. So if they're not compliant, like who is um accountable for that and how does it get to the situation where they're not compliant yet they're running a you know a food service business out of a building like that? Yes. So I guess it it falls between uh PNC and school, depending on the level of compliance that's there, because most PNCs that would run the the canteen are responsible for the internal Inside. and the, yeah. the school itself is responsible for the external. Um, so an example of the school that I went to yesterday, uh, uh, sorry, last week, um, the building itself was not compliant because of the walkways through. So from a fire escape point of view, mm -hmm. the benches were too close together, which makes it not compliant. The building also had asbestos in it. So there was another reason, but there is definitely buildings out there have that non-compliance and no matter what the PNC does, they wouldn't meet that compliance internally. They would have to look at doing a new build. Um, and often these projects where they're looking at a new build are pairing them up with other aspects of the school, whether it be the amenities, uh, another building or an office block. Um, because of the funding and the way that the funding has come across, they pair up quite well and they're more successful in getting those, those grants for new builds when they're looking at additional items. Yep. Um, but yeah, so there, there is a, it, it really depends on whose court it falls into, uh, if it's the outside of the building or the internal, but majority, I would say 95% of the tuck shops that I've been to, it's the physical building itself that needs to be changed to meet compliance standards. And that's from walkways, uh, hand sink locations, storage facilities, um, and pest management facilities, because a lot of, the older canteens um, aren't pest proof. They're not secured properly. Yeah. And they're always in the open near a shed. And mm. it's very easy for and pests and stuff to get And the bins are just outside. <laughs> exactly. So um, they're kind of setting themselves up in a in a, a perfect scenario of um, making it harder to maintain and keep, keep that space clean. And, you know, being in the education sector uh, and feeding children, 
it's it's such an important sector because you know they're an important they're a very important part of society they're, they're they're growing up so you really want to look after them and do the best for them making sure that they're eating from a facility that's clean that's well maintained and that's producing healthy food and sometimes as conveners you're heavily restricted on that based on the facilities in the building that you have there's only so much you can physically do to achieve those targets and I've got one last question. Then I'll open it up to the floor. Um, so this is, I guess, from a personal perspective. Um, the I'm on the PNC at my daughter's school, mm -hmm. and um, our tuck shop is basically the the kitchen attached to the hall. So it's yes. absolutely not purpose built. And so we're looking at doing an upgrade. And the school has told us that we have to go through Q build, even though there's not an external component. It's mm -hmm. just the in internal so why would the school want to use QBuild instead of an external provider uh so i think we, 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 in terms of QBuild, I, I believe it's just because they're a uh government approved education approved department um for the physical build itself uh externally it would just come down to the recommendation of their approved supplies We've worked with a lot of people throughout what we do, so we can recommend other people to you, but I think most avenues would, would potentially lead through QBuild, mainly for estimates and, and control purposes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, it just feels like the quote that we got is huge yes. compared to what we actually uh, I, I'm of course. flabbergasted by. The and I, they always overestimate. They always yeah. overestimate. Um, but, yeah, it's it's quite common i i just had one before i was here where they were looking at the budget going the, the qs estimate has come back and it's definitely so not what we thought it was going to be um and unfortunately at the moment that that's there's been a lot of price inflations on anything that we get into the country um so the government will need to review the budgets that they give out to schools for these renovations yeah they, they really need to look at them because well just to give you an example within the quote um it's a tiny school 270 kids and we want to you know, to replace the oven with a commercial oven. And they quoted us a 10 tray combi oven. Yeah. Which and is, I said, well, we don't need that. It's why, and and that, that's very common. You yeah. go in and see people that, that aren't in the food industry and they'll ask the request to put those ovens in. They are way over spec for a school. And they won't be used. You'll never use full, it. Full you, you'll never use the capacity out of a combi oven. Not in a canteen because you're not steaming, you're not baking bread, you're not making pastries. Mm. Most schools, I would, I would actually know all schools that I visited, everybody's heating food, like cooking food on a dry heat setting. Yep. You will never use the facilities in a combi oven. Mm. And the $10,000 extra that's thrown on top, it can Just go to wasted. something else. It yeah. can definitely go to something else. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Does anyone else online have any questions for Mattia? Nope. Okay. Well, obviously we've answered all of the questions and given you all the information you need. Um, so yeah, I don't think there's anything else. Tony, did you want to, did you have anything to say or are you happy um, to leave it to Mattia? Tony's um, from. No, I'm, uh, I'm quite happy with what I've heard today. I, I thank, thank you. Um, but uh, no, I think you've covered, uh, uh, you've covered the basis there this afternoon. So thank you very much. I know it will be individualised, but I did sort of note down here what is your pricing structure. That's yep. obviously something that everyone always wants to know but often are afraid to ask. Yes. <laughs> no, it, it definitely varies from school to school. Look, to, to give peace of mind in that scenario, there is no um, cost involved in us coming to meet you initially. Even and if to, you go regionally? Uh, regionally. So with regional sites, we try and um, put together a group of schools as opposed to one, generally in a region, there'll be three, four or five schools. We'll try and go and see everybody at the same time. Um, we're working on ways around regional ones to avoid uh, travel costs, uh, but they're really the only thing that we would incur if we're going regional, regional. If we have to fly, if I have to, if I can get to you in a car in a reasonable amount of time, I will be there. <laughs> um, but that initial, that initial conversation for us to have, there is no cost involved um, because what you think you are wanting might be very different once we go through that conversation for the assessment. So, um, you know, it, it might be pointing you in a direct, different direction, but having that initial conversation, us coming out, no cost, but very, very important for us to have. Because we can 
everybody can understand the needs and it sort of points the ship in the right direction of where the school should be looking to go before it starts taking a step. Once we do make contact and have that initial meeting, from there I'll draft a proposal um, to send back to you and that will have our breakdown of costs and we can have conversations around that from there. But we don't we don't charge anything, we don't move on anything until the school is happy and is happy to accept the cost of what's involved. Um, in the scheme of things, we are probably the, the most cost-effective trade out there if you're looking at builders, plumbers, electricians, um, when it comes to schools, because we want schools to work. We really want to better schools. So our fees are extremely reasonable, but again, they, they change from case to case. They change from site to site because if we um, blanket everyone too much, uh, some people will pay for stuff that they just don't need. Uh, do you project manage throughout? So we liaise, um, once we get through the floor plan and build stage, uh, sorry, floor plan and full set stage, um, we don't do the project management of the build itself, but we work with a lot of different people that we would re recommend to the schools that are approved through Education Queensland um, to project manage those facilities, whether it be architects or project management firms themselves. Um, we work with a lot of those groups um, to get the best results for the school in the end. And they're all on the same path. And those people that we work with predominantly deal in schools. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, any questions now or is everyone happy with uh, with what's been chatted? I have one if you don't mind. Great. Um, our tuck shop got upgraded five or so years ago, but it's sort of, yes. it feels like it's sort of half done. Like they've missed some really key things okay. that you guys have discussed. Um, yes. But we went for a grant and got it. Would we be allowed to go for another grant if it was only five years ago and not 20 years ago? Uh, I guess it would be identifying if the building was fit for purpose or, or fit for the school's needs. If your school has seen a huge amount of growth, or it was really inefficient, um, then I don't see why not. Uh, it might not be um, as, as easy, but I definitely don't see why it couldn't happen. Which grant did you did you have, Merrin? Uh, I don't. It was. I think it was the gambling one, but I'm not sure exactly what grant it was. But yeah, we got an upgrade. But things like storage, freezers, dishwashers. Um, so we've still got a wooden bench, things like that, that just got missed. Yeah, I, okay. <laughs> I definitely missed a good chunk then. Yeah. Um, this scenario we do see every now and then where it, where it turns out that a, um, an equipment salesman has done the design for the kitchen yep. in the purpose of selling the equipment. Um, yep. So it, it is common. But if you still have domestic appliances and wooden benches, then uh, I would say you'd be pretty close into the wheelhouse of, of qualifying for an upgrade because it it would very much not be fit for purpose in producing we've got a couple school. of stainless steel benches with like a fridge or a freezer underneath but we still got yeah. a couple of wooden benches and the sink is wooden like wooden around it and yeah no dishwasher a yeah, big right. chest freezer that takes a heap of space up and things like that um and our be a grown you and should increase. have a available in uh, after this for you to get in contact with us. If you'd uh -huh. like to take some photos of what you have on site there and email yep. them through, um, I can definitely make contact with you and, and we can have a look at it from there because you definitely yep. shouldn't have any wood surrounding your wash up area no. by any yeah. means. No. Um, more than happy to have I've a look at it for you. If you wanted to. And I've put it in every single tuck shop report. And nothing because, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like wood is acceptable at home, but in a commercial setting, you know, they house bacteria. I wouldn't even want that at home. No, to be so, fair. <laughs> and in Australian Australian health demand standards, um, it doesn't meet the requirement to have to have wood in those areas by any means. Um, yeah. You know, shelving, but it has to be marine grade so it doesn't absorb moisture. There is a lot of rules and regulate rules and regulations around it. So. I'm surprised that they've left that in there. Mm. Nobody's yeah. checking. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank um, you. No worries. I will send out a flyer from uh, Food Strategy to everyone online today as well, or everyone who registered. And as I said, this um, meeting will be, it's being recorded and we'll upload it onto the, the website. 
Um, and just to let everyone know with the Gambling Community Benefit Fund, the next round, the current round closes at the end of February. Um, and then the next round is the super round for $100,000. So um, if you're sort of on the on the path to, to a refurbishment or upgrade, um, and if you can get your ducks in a row in time to get that application in, I mean, you would need to get a quote very, very soon um, to, to be able to, to go for that grant, but we'll be um, posting information about that on our Facebook page as well. So yeah, look out for that one if, if you think that you're ready to go for it. But as Matthias said, um, getting some advice about what what you need and what's possible in your space is really important to do before you actually apply for a grant. Otherwise you end up in, in the situation that Maren's in with her tuck shop. Any other questions or comments? No. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for coming along today and thank you most especially to Mattia oh, thank you. Um, for sharing his wisdom around um, tuck shop refurbishments uh, and we're hoping to work uh, pretty closely with food strategy um, to make sure that everyone out there and particularly our members are very aware of the services that they have available um, to make tuck shops an optimal space for um, healthy and safe food production for for our Queensland children so thank you very much everyone for logging in today and uh, just a quick plug for our meeting next week which we've only just promoted um, today but we'll be talking about uh, what Smart Choices says about drinks and um, where the sources of confusion lay around what drinks can be served in school tuck shops. So um, if you're interested in that topic, sign up um, and you'll probably see a Facebook post by this afternoon about that meeting. So thanks everyone for coming along today. Thank you all. Bye.